Hello and welcome to Modkit Mayhem. This week I'm building a Space Marine fort just to mix it up a little bit and uh, have a change from doing uh, Second World War armour or armour in general. I thought uh, it'd be a good challenge and um, the reason behind this was the fact that I felt that I needed to sort of just experiment a little bit more with my skills and the best thing about sort of science fiction and Warhammer 40k you can try different things you know and, and experiment more and it's not as strict as it is with with armor or World War II armor or whatever arm you were doing or any other model you have a little bit more leeway in terms of what looks right that's the idea behind this project just to have a little bit of fun and uh, just loosen up the kind of the skill set so I can try different things and different techniques I had a pot noodle container that I thought would make a good turret and I'd kept that on the side or uh, in a project like this so it'd been sat around for a bit and I got some phone card and I thought well I can cut something together and just try different ideas so I, I sort of did a little bit of doodling just different shapes and then I thought well actually what really dictates it is how big the base is at the moment it's very hard to get materials so I looked around and I realized at the back of photo frames there's the kind of hardboard you need a sturdy base, so it has a better kind of rigidity, 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 <laughs> rigidity. It's, it's firmer and um, so it's better. So you, so what I did is I took out a, a picture frame that I, I weren't going to use and I shaped out a kind of shape and tried to make it not square. So it's more of a triangle shape. It just looks a bit more organic. Sketched out the shape of the base and, you know, sort of got it to a point where I was happy of how it would look. Again, I didn't know how tall it was going to be. You don't really know when you're doing this. You just, just lay it by ear and go with the flow and see what feels best. Again, it's all around that pot noodle. <laughs> so once I was happy with the actual shape of the project or the base, I took a marker pen and just laid out the thicker lines just so I knew what, where, where I had to cut. The thing is to remember, when you do this, as you cut, you'll find that actually you have to flip the board. So you kind of have to do a mirror version of what you designed. That's what I found out, so that's something to bear in mind when you're doing it, because the way you cut it, you'll see it rips a certain way, the board, and um, it looks tidier if you use the other side, so you have to, when you shave the edges, which you need to do, it's easier to do the reverse, the reverse side. It takes a long time to cut, it's pretty tough, though I actually got a blister on my hands from the, from the blisters on my fingers, from the, the knife. It's not the best ergonomically designed knife, and do not cut yourself. You do not want it to go to any, at any time, let alone at this moment. And there we have it, the base is, is ready to go. I, uh, I sanded it, which was a bad idea inside because the fiber went everywhere. Sand this outside, you have been warned. Once you've got the edge smooth, then uh, the best thing to do is actually cut straight lines into it. Just You don't have to cut really deep, just enough to give a certain amount of grip because what happens when you put PVA on there, it actually moves. Whereas if you put these cuts, there's something for the glue to grip to. And now it, it grips a lot stronger. So yeah, just make a load of cuts up and down. Also I think it helps if you do soak the board with clay or it actually breaks the surface tension of it so it doesn't warp as much as it would do if you if you just left it as it was. Once I've done that I took some PVA, watered it down and then I painted the edges just so that they were uh, kind of coated and tougher because they'll take quite a bit of battering when you're using it on the table. Not that I'll, I'll probably ever play a game with this because the way my life is at the moment it's enough just making this and living. <laughs> I haven't got time for games at the moment, but uh, maybe in the future. So I took a Space Marine, well, one I had in the box, and I knew that sometimes heroes have larger bases. I wanted to design it so that the ramparts, the hero could stand on them. Because if you if you made the bases for the small Space Marine, where the hero base would tumble off, it was best to design it so that it could the, the ramparts could encompass, or anywhere a, a character could stand, it was big enough to support a hero base. That's something to bear in mind because it would be really frustrating if your painted character kept falling off. After that I decided to work on the height. It would have been very easy to make the ramparts really really high up but actually I think it's more fun if they're just a bit lower and a bit more sort of interactive so if the base does get overrun with whoever the enemy is then there's a chance of sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat and assault troops being able to get up there so it just makes the game a little more exciting. Don't make something so impossible that it actually becomes pointless. There's still a chance of jeopardy in terms of the enemy can sort of surround or come around the other side of the base. 
another good thing to do is actually go online and actually look at some concept art from game levels because game artists are doing the same sort of thing they're thinking of different things where you can go and where you can just mix it more fun so it's always good to bear that in mind when you're building terrain do different levels and different kind of angles so it just mixes up because otherwise if you just made it straight and you know one level it'd be pretty boring once I was happy with that I actually laid out the the kind of the measurements of the of the rampart this would make it much easier to remember when I'm cutting it so that you don't make a mistake with the measurements. If you start making mistakes, it becomes very hard to work with. Just make a little note of the measurements and then how you're going to cut it up because you've got to allow for 5mm for the foam board. Try and pre-plan as much as possible. So there it is. Once I'd cut the actual pieces, I started gluing them down to the, to the base. Uh, another good tip is to have a little right angle piece that you've cut off and just use that to sort of brace the structure so it just holds up right otherwise sometimes they tumble because you can never get an exactly 90 degree cut it's always slightly left or right of that so <laughs> yeah it will never be unless you've got I mean, a big guillotine might do it but um, as it stands cutting with a, a knife you'll have a slight a certain amount of slope to the, the cut and therefore the, the pieces never stand right so if you use a, a piece that can hold it with a 90 degrees cut it helps a lot after I'd put down the actual skeleton of the wall, it was time to do the actual ramparts. I probably could have used a thinner plastic card for this. I didn't think I really probably needed to use the foam card and maybe I'll do that different next time. But um, this time I just used a foam card base and then put the plastic card on top. Once I'd done the ramparts, I realized that the actual turret needed to be higher. So I had to cut a strip of plastic card that would kind of act as a skirting around the lower half of the actual turret. So you can see there I've actually held it with little crocodile clips just to keep the tension on the, uh, actually on the super glue. I just left that dry overnight. The actual skirt sat higher than the terrain by about 5mm so I just created three stoppers at the bottom and then that, that's where the skirt would sit on that. My plan is to put a sandy base on this so the sand will rise up to the lower part of the skirt so you won't see any of that. You can always hide certain areas around the base anyway with, you know, with terrain and sort of put mud or whatever ground you're going to use. You can hide it with that. Then it was moving on to the actual outer structure, which I wanted sloped. I could have made them straight, but I think it looked a bit more interesting with a kind of just slight angle to them. I hope I can do a really nice sort of concrete texture on there. I'm still not sure how I'm going to paint that yet. So after that, I just put all the parts together that I'd cut. It's a good idea to just cut as you go and then um, you can you can adjust accordingly. If you've just need, like made it two, th two or three mil too long, you can just cut that down and, and fix it as you go. Then once I'd got the structure and I was happy with it, I actually moved on to the turret. I did some designs, I wasn't really sure how I was going to do the turret and in the end I sort of went with a kind of destroyer kind of look. So it's like an old style turret that's slightly boxy and square and um, it's like obviously come off a tank and they've just put it up on there from an old design and now it's become sort of part of the fortifications. The turret looks a little bit big compared to the gun and a bit of me once sort of thought well maybe I should up upgrade the gun. Then I thought no, no just keep it as it is, it kind of looks more interesting. Uh, rather than sort of make the turret boring and kind of slab sided, I cut gothic looking cuts out of them. I don't know what I called them, like an alcove kind of cuts, just to give it a little bit more uh, interest. And the plan was to, to sort of put rivets on just to make it look a bit more old school. Not sure how I'm going to paint it. Kind of envisaged like an ultramine white with like a lot of rust. So uh, we'll see on the next video how that goes. See here, you can see I'm building that structure again using 45 degree cuts to hold up the actual parts of the plates. It's quite a big structure, so you need to kind of brace it in the middle. If I'm honest, I'm not used to plastic hard to build structures before. It's great once you, you kind of, you feel like you can do anything with it. And I think I'll probably get more advanced as I go along, you know, I'll be able to build more sort of advanced structures in the future. One of those things you just got to keep trying and, and learning from every time you do something. Once I'd got as far as I could with the turret, I moved on to some detail ideas and uh, I looked at uh, cathedrals and it's kind of a mix of sort of functional tank modern sci-fi with gothic kind of cathedral. And so some buttresses seemed like a good idea, steel buttresses. I wasn't sure whether to build them out of plastic card. I think maybe plastic card would have been better than foam card because foam, when you start actually cutting the arches, kind of flakes. It's very hard to get that round cut, even with a very sharp scalpel blade. Plastic card would have been better, but it still would have been tricky. On the top of the foam card, I, I glued down strips of plastic card so they could glue nodules, as they were, <laughs> or spikes, just to kind of give it a bit more detail and, and interest. The turret could have been very easy just to leave it as it is. I think you need to kind of incorporate it into the world. And I think if you can get some kind of gothic sort of structure in there, that actually lends itself to the design. I was a bit worried about uh, using white glue or PVA on plastic card. I wasn't sure how it was going to stick. And so far it seems to be okay. And I'm hoping when I spray with an undercoat and actually paint it, that'll further sort of seal it as it were. But so far it seems okay. 
There was another part of the base which I'd built and uh, it was a tower for some heavy bolters and in the end I decided that actually they would be better as a standalone piece of sort of scatter terrain so you could move them around wherever you wanted so every game it'd be a little bit different. So I put them aside and then I thought well I can't leave that space bare so I'll just build a little bit of structure again more levels. After all that it was time to move on to the bolts and there's no quick way of doing this you just get a bit of sprue and use a knife. I find a good way to do it is get the scalpel blade lift it up 45 degrees to the end of it's sort of where it'll turn and then use it as a kind of guillotine uh, as you go you can get much finer cuts and you can get through quite a bit more bolts so it's a good way of doing it just use that and then move along as you cut attach them again with PVA it's much quicker just put some PVA on a little stick and then just dab where you need it Another one is quite cool is you can get quite good square studs with Games Workshop sprues because most of their sprues are all along with a tapered edges. Harder to cut but you can use them for lots of larger studs. That's a good way of doing things, especially in a gothic way. They look kind of like mini tank stops. Then to add some extra detail to the turret so it's not just sort of a boring, I created some armoured plates just to break up the sort of surface a little bit more and add a little bit of detail. Once the turret dried, I added the last panels and began to start detailing it. Tamiya glue, super fine Tamiya glue is perfect for doing this kind of work. Much easier than the other kinds of glues. If you're going to use plastic card, definitely I recommend using that. Although it's pretty strong smelling, so make sure you can open the window and uh, don't do it in confined space because you'll be feeling a bit rotten. After about an hour of doing that, I had a banging headache for about <laughs> most of the evening after that. <laughs> I began looking for some details on sprues from an old Land Raider kit. I just cut out and found, sort of found bits that were interesting and, and put them on the side and when it came to it I could sort of start gluing them on. I also took an old hoover apart and there were some sort of parts in that that were kind of quite cool. I found this little round sort of stud that would have been good for um, an antenna and I, I scribed off the part numbers and then sanded the back so that it had some grip because it was quite, quite a waxy sort of coating on it. And uh, yeah, use that to make a kind of antenna that would sit behind the commander on the on the actual turret. Just again, more detail adds a little bit more interest. I actually, if I'm honest, made a mistake where I was going to place this. I made a hole in the wrong part and realised after, so I just had to go with it. I think I'd have probably put it on the other side of the turret, but it was fine. It looked right. Not everything goes to plan. You can see I'm just putting a name tag on the back of the turret. I'm not sure I'm going to paint that. <laughs> it's going to be tricky. I'll test my hand painting skills and bring some a name on that. But uh, yeah, it looks quite cool. Here I'm starting the riveting process on the side of the turret. Again, no quick way of doing this. You just have to sit and do it. And actually, it's quite relaxing. You've got some good music on. But you have to be careful because white glue doesn't glue that fast. So it's very easy to uh, when you turn it around to knock what you've just done. Just take your time. The structure's come together now and I'm quite happy with it. It's a good thing to do is just stand back and have a look. So I left it a day and then looked back at what I'd done and um, realised that the, the top parts of the actual, where the ramparts were, where the sort of people walked around, it was very bare and I didn't really want to do that. So I realised it's a pretty good idea just to put some panels down like I'd done for the lower part. With time as well, I was running out of time because I've got to get edited this now. So yeah, I really had to sort of get on with it. And uh, it was one of the last sort of jobs. And actually wasn't, I was kind of dreading it and I don't know why, but actually it turned out okay didn't take that as long as I thought it was going to. I've obviously my skills had improved from using the plastic card and doing all the things I had. It was quite easy in the end. Again just glue them down with white PVA. You could use super glue if you wanted but I'm not entirely sure how well super glue works with the foam card. I'm always worried that it's going to have some reaction although when I did glue some on just as a test nothing seemed to happen. Best to be safe and just use PVA. Don't want to ruin what you've done. I created a door and I used um, some plastic card just to make a sort of interesting edging for it just so it kind of had a kind of frame as it were or an armoured frame. In the end I didn't use this one, it just didn't feel right so I just put a door on the actual turret part so that's kind of the way of getting into the base. Here you can see the actual superstructures, I glued them down to the side of the turret, barbettes or whatever you call them, um, they, they look quite good, very gothic. And here we have it, here's the kind of base pretty much 90% done. I'm probably going to add some more details which I'll do for the next video just before I paint it and I'll have to put, start putting the textures on in terms of the concrete, the sand base and probably on the metal I'll do something so I'm gonna to have to add some sort of textures but I, literally I'd run out of time. It's quite surprising how much work goes into actually building something like this you know it just sucks a lot hours away. I was hoping to get on this video to actually get it to where it'd be primed but there was just too much work in the end this as far as I got so I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting it's been good fun to do I've really learned a lot about using plastic card and foam card it's all materials I've not used before so there was a lot to learn 
so the next video will be me finishing the kind of the texturing and the, the weathering and uh, and getting it painted and, and done ready for it to go on sort of a tabletop as it were i hope you enjoyed it thanks very much for watching i'll uh, catch you next week where we paint this and uh, and finish the model and then uh, hopefully i can get back onto that panther the frankenstein panther because it's done really well and thank you very much to all the 21 subscribers it's, it's great that i'm getting subscribers i'm really chuffed that their channel's starting to sort of pick up and get the views which uh, you know when you do something like this you, you really do hope people enjoy it and like it and and kind of want you to do more so i've learned a lot and it's been great and yeah it's been it's been good thanks very much for watching take care for now i'll see you next week cheers Bruh.